Okay, uh, welcome back. So today we're going to take a look at how to create that kind of ghost trail effect that I did um, a week or two ago in Unity, only this time with Godot. And again, this is just kind of an exercise for me to learn Godot better, but I also wanted to kind of branch out and cover some different stuff on my channel. So first of all, let's show you what I have already set up. Now I have a link to this empty project in the description down below, um, so you can Go grab that off of GitHub if you like. The art that I'm using is all um, copyright or <laughs> Creative Commons Zero art you can find on itch.io, and I will link to both of the artists in the description. So I have a player scene here, and it's based on a kinematic body 2D. Uh, it has an animated sprite, collision shape, and a camera. And then on the player, I have a script that uses a state machine to make a really simple idle run jump state. Uh, I have another scene that's my platforms in the world. I have another scene that I'm using to make a tile set. And then I have my main scene, which has references to both my player and platforms. If I hit play, uh, you'll see that I have a player that can run back and forth, and jump, and collide with the environment. So pretty simple to start with. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add that kind of traily ghost effect at the end. Now, the logic behind this is relatively simple. I'm going to create another scene that's going to be uh, a representation of each of those individual ghost images. As the player is, I'm going to use running or jumping in this case, I'm going to create another one of those ghost images behind them. Uh, and then on the ghost image itself, I'm going to use a tween to have it go from being visible to transparent. And then once that tween is done, I'll remove it from the scene. So the logic is pretty simple. And let's take a look at what we need to do to make this happen. So first of all, I'm gonna create a new scene and I'm gonna do this just by clicking the plus button. And for my root node in this scene, I'm gonna use a sprite. Um, I'm gonna rename this to ghost and I'll make a child of this sprite a tween node. And I'll change the name of this as well. I'll call this alpha tween, because this is going to be what I use to change the alpha value of the sprite, making it opaque to transparent. Um, OK, cool. Now uh, I'm going to save this scene really quickly here. So save scene. I'm just going to call it ghost. Save. Now, I don't have anything assigned to the sprite, and that's by design. We're going to be assigning that in code based on which sprite the player is currently showing. So I'm going to go back to my player here, and I'm going to add to my player a timer node. And the timer node is going to instantiate one of those ghosts after a very short delay. So to make everything kind of clear, I'm going to call this ghost timer. Uh, down in the inspector here, I'm going to set my wait time to something very small, say 0.1. I'm going to make this auto start and make sure it's not a one shot. Now, I want this timer to make something happen in my player script. So Godot has a very simple way to do this using their signal system. So I'm going to highlight my ghost timer, choose the node tab, and then under node there are signals. The most common signal to use with a timer is the timeout signal. So I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to press connect. And I had an issue with this yesterday, too. My pause button is right over my connect. So I'm going to hit connect. It's going to ask me what I want to connect it to. And I want to connect it to the player, because that's where I have my script. So player highlighted. Um, it's going to tell me what I want to call the method. And on ghost timer, timeout is just fine. So I'll connect. And then this automatically opens up my player script and allows me to take a look at the function it already created. So I've got this function on ghost timer timeout, and I need to replace this with the function body. So I'm going to go down here and just kind of talk us through what we need to do. So first, make a copy of the ghost object. So to do that, I'm going to create a new local variable. I'm going to call it var uh, this ghost. And I'm going to make that equal to the ghost scene that I just created. 
So preload. Uh, resources, scenes, and then I want to choose the ghost scene. Then I want to create the ghost. Oh, haha. I'm supposed to create the ghost up here. So um, after I do the preload, dot instance, open close parentheses, and that creates a copy of it. And the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, give the ghost a parent. So what I could do is I could just say that my ghost is going to be a child of my player. So I could do add child, this ghost. And then after I add this ghost as a child, just give it a position. So this ghost dot position is equal to position. Now, the problem with this is that if I uh, take a look at my, my main scene here, if I make the ghost a child of the player, then where the player moves, the ghost is going to move as well. I don't want the ghost moving. So to make it be stationary, I'm going to make the ghost a child of the main game instead of a child of the player. All right, so to make that happen, uh, I'm going to go back into my player script here and distraction free mode. And instead of adding the child as, uh, or sorry, instead of adding the ghost as a child of the player, I'm instead going to get the parent and then add the ghost as a child to the parent. So I'm going to call get parent dot add child. So I'm making the ghost a child of whatever the player's parent is. And then this is setting the ghost's position. Now, if I play here, um, you'll notice everything works. So it's good that we didn't break it, but we don't see anything. And the reason why is the ghost had no sprite in its regular form. So we have to assign the sprite through code. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to go back into my player code here. And the sprite part or the part that actually shows is a texture. I'm using an animated sprite for my character instead of using a sprite in an animation player. So it's just a tiny bit more complicated for me than it would be if I was using an animation player. But let's cover how it works with an animated sprite. All right, so what I want to do is I want to grab this echo dot texture, which is the what's actually seen on a sprite is going to be equal to now I want to have it equal to on my player here the animated sprite so I'm gonna to have to call the animated sprite and then I want to grab the frames and then um, after I grab the frames I want to get the current animation and the current frame from that so it's a little complicated but bear with me here so I want to say uh, I want to grab the animated sprite itself, and to do that in Godot 3.0, if it's a child of your object, you can just call it with a dollar sign and then the name. If there's a space in the name, you have to use quotations. So I'm going to do dollar sign animated sprite dot frames dot get frame, and the frame I want to get is from the current animation. So animated sprite dot animation and from that animation the frame I want to get is the current frame so I want to get animated sprite dot frame so again we just kind of go over the logic of this we're going to say the texture of this echo is equal to the player's animated sprite we're going to get the frames from there and then we want to get information from one specific frame and that specific frame comes from the current animation, the current frame. All right, cool. So now, if I play now, oops, did I make a mistake? I'm sure I did. Um, oh, huh, I called it an echo. This ghost. All right, cool. So I'm going to hit play. And now you can see that those little ghosts are forming uh, about every second. I must not have changed the time. Now, one thing that's happening here is they're not going away. 
and that's because I didn't set up that tween, and they're not facing the right direction always. If I'm pointing to the left, they don't face left. So let's fix that. So if we go back into our um, uh, player here, I want to go to my ghost timer, and I didn't change the time. I'm going to make it 0.1, and open this up. Now, to make them face the right direction, all I have to do is just make sure that my uh, ghost has the same orientation as my player. So I'm going to say this ghost dot flip h is equal to animated sprite dot flip h. So if I play this now, having everything flipped correctly, that's way better. Now one thing that's happening here, let me get, you can't really see, but he's always generating these ghosts. I only want that to happen when I'm running or when I'm jumping. So what I'm going to do here is in my on ghost timer timeout, I'm going to make an if statement for everything. So if state is equal to run or state is equal to jump. And then I'm going to indent all of this so that that only happens if we're in the right state. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to make the uh, sprite fade out and I want it to disappear so that I don't have all of these ghosts cluttering up my, um, my memory. So I'm going to go to the ghost scene here and choose my ghost object. Actually, nope, I want to choose my tween first because I'm going to create a little method here that's going to um, be triggered when the tween is done and that's to destroy it. So with my tween selected, I'm going to go down to node, my signals, and the signal I'm going to use is tween completed. And again, I need to connect that, so I need to unmaximize. I'm going to connect that to my ghost. Um, oh, I haven't made a script yet though. Good lord. All right, so on my ghost, I'm going to make a new script. So new script, GD script, inherit sprite, default template. I like to keep my scripts in a separate folder. I'm just going to call it ghost, save, and create. Now I'm going to go back to my tween, my node, tween completed. I'm going to connect that signal to the ghost. And then in my method here, it creates a new, or in my script here, it creates a new function. So uh, once the tween is completed, all I'm going to do is just free this object from the queue. So queue free. Now what I want to happen is when everything starts up, I want that tween to work. So I'm going to go into my ready function here. And I'm going to call the tween. So I'm going to say um, alpha tween dot interpolate property, which is the kind of the properties of the tween. And I want this to apply to the self, meaning the sprite itself. I want it to be the property and the property for transparency in Godot. You go here, it's under visibility and it's modulate lowercase m. So node path property, I'm going to put in quotations, modulate, and then it needs an initial value. My initial value is going to be color 1, 1, 1, 1, meaning it's 1 in red, green, and blue, and 1 in alpha, which is white. The property I want to go to is going to be color 1, 1, 1, 0, meaning fully transparent. Next, I need to tell it my, uh, my easing property, or actually, no, how long I want it to take. And I'm going to want this to take, say, 0.6 seconds. And now is my easing property. Now there's a whole bunch of these, and you can play around with this. It gets actually pretty fun. Um, I'm going to take uh, sign, and then whether you want it to ease in or ease out. We don't want it to ease in. We instead just want it to ease out. And then close parentheses. And then the last thing we have to do is start that tween. So alpha tween dot start. 
Okay, so all of that's happening and ready. Interpolate property, interpolate property, just to remind you, we tell it what object it applies to, what property on that object, the initial value, the final value, how long it takes, what kind of easing, and then if you want it ease in, out, or both. So, cool. Uh, I'm going to hit play. And there we go. And if you'll notice, we're not making those little ghost effects when we're just standing still. But we are making them as we run. Now, if you had like a dash state on your platformer, you could have your, um, your player script say something like, if state is dash, then do this, and then you're only seeing that on a dash, or like maybe a teleport, or there's a bunch of different things that it could look really cool on. So yeah, um, that was a really, really small kind of tutorial on how to create that uh, 2D ghost effect using Godot and GD script. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter where I'm posting or where I post about my new videos. You can join the Discord chat. I'll create it. I'll include a link to that. Um, and yeah, have yourselves. Oh yeah, if you learned anything today, feel free to give me a like. Otherwise, have a wonderful day.